Welcome back to Crunch Labs. Today we're gonna play a game called Will It Float? We've got quite a few doozies lined up for you today. Wow! But I think we'll just start with the classic, the ping pong ball with the hair dryer. It's always gonna work really well like this. You take it off to the side. That's the Kawanda effect in action. And that's just cool. But what if we were to try a tennis ball? Will it float? Place your guesses at home. I mean a little actually. <laughs> I mean the answer is kind of yes. Wow, it's supposed to be no. Still, it's not as good as way up there. And what's happening there is the tennis ball just weighs a lot more than a ping pong ball. So the force of gravity has a bigger effect. It's winning that tug of war versus the force of the air pushing up. This is the same principle behind the fluidized bed of like how we got the grains of sand afloat. If you go back and watch that video, I also talk about this exact same principle. But I do have something a little more powerful than a hair dryer an air pressure hose. So this is the exact same air pressure. That powers our tennis ball cannon up there. We're stealing air pressure from the tennis ball cannon momentarily to use it for our will it float game. Tennis ball with this air pressure line at 100 PSI. Do we think it'll float? Oh, it floats. We got a floater. So if you guessed yes, you were right. Let's find some more objects. Okay. We now have a table full of amazing items, including a cucumber or zucchini. I never know. What is this? It's a cucumber. An orange. Or what is this? Just kidding. <laughs> a carrot. It's a little, not very strong carrot. A hot dog, an actual orange, roll of tape, a toy boat, a Coke can, Rubik's cube, screwdriver, baby, Nerf football, inflatable ball, bull bat, bull ball. Now start thinking which one of these things you think will float, which ones you think won't. I actually don't know the answer either, so we're just gonna experiment real time. Let's start with maybe the most obvious. An upcoming video of mine is all about wiffle ball and the physics behind it, and maybe if you have engineering skills, how to cheat a wiffle ball, because obviously I'm not gonna be very good compared to them. I feel like this is gonna be a float, but you place your own guesses. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. Did we get that? I got it right in the tape roll. Take that, dude, perfect. So that if you guessed it will float, you win. How about orange? Now the difference is this is a lot heavier. Will it be able to overcome the force of gravity? There's only one way to find out. I think that floats-ish, you know? It's kind of like the tennis ball and the hair dryer. That's more like, will it levitate? In that case, yes, it levitated. All right. How about now this bowl? This is pretty lightweight, so I don't think it'll be too heavy. Question is, will that Kawand effect come into play? Definitely we're in the air. Did not float. All right, time for the cucumber. What do you think? You know, it is rounded, so we are gonna get the air kind of sticking to it. Is it round enough? But first, let me explain why roundness even matters and the juicy physics of what's going on here. So what is it about this that makes it stable, where the ball isn't falling off to one side or the other? These arrows represent the stream of air coming from the blow dryer and sort of curving around the ball. Like we talked about in the Crunch Labs Build Box Mini Disc Launcher Juicy Physics lesson, air will stick to curve things like a frisbee, just like water sticks to curve things like a spoon. Now the way air streams work, this is one group of air molecules and they all love to hang out together. So they came out of the hair dryer together, they wanna still hang out together, even if there's something in the way. So as these guys come around the ball, these air molecules speed up to catch up with their buddies, right? Because this is a bigger distance to travel. It's like if you're walking somewhere with their friend and they take a shortcut, but you take the long way, you kind of need to run when you're taking your long cut in order to catch up with them. Now there's another principle that we won't get too much into right now called the Bernoulli principle, but basically for fluids, 
If it's going faster, it creates low pressure. So that means because these molecules are taking the long cut and they're trying to go faster to catch up with their buddies, all around this ball, it creates sort of a low pressure bubble. Because remember, this is a cross section, but basically this same cross section goes all around in three dimensions. So this ball, whatever's floating in that stream of the hair dryer, there's sort of a low pressure bubble all around it. That's why, as you can see here with the Crunch Labs air ball toy, we can turn this to the side and it still stays in the stream. Because you can imagine there's kind of just this bubble of low pressure. So the rest of the air at normal air pressure is pushing in on all sides. So if it starts to go out, it's like, mm-mm, the high pressure, pfft, it's gonna move it back into that like physical bubble in the air, which is why it can move it back and forth like this, and it just seems so stable. And now that we've covered all that, the question is, will this cucumber and or zucchini float? A cucumber floats! How about this can? It is curved, it is light. Just not sure if it's gonna like be too unstable. Place your guesses, here we go. Wow! <laughs> will it float? A can will not float. Too lightweight relative to how curvy it is. Rubik's cube, what do you think there? Boo. So I think what's happening there is the sides are just too sharp and square, so you don't get all those air molecules rushing around to meet up with their buddies, and therefore you don't have that low pressure air bubble that forms to like keep it floating there. How about this screwdriver? That could be interesting. That worked really well, so the end of this is round enough that we're able to form that bubble. A bowl? It's round. Question is, is it stable enough? What's your guess? Here we go. Wow! That's cool. I was not expecting that to float. I thought it would be too unstable. Bull works amazingly well. How about this roll of tape? It's kind of round. Whoa. This football could be interesting. It's kind of heavy. Place your guess for the football. Oh, it has one of these whistling things. All right, now let's see if we can get it to float. Here we go. Too heavy. Let's see if I can get it into the foam pit. Ooh, almost took out the ceiling light. <laughs> All right, uh, green ball. I feel like this has got to be a floater. What do you guys think? There it goes. That was delightful. I was not expecting that to work as well. Bat, it does have a nice rounded top, but it is pretty heavy. Place your guess at home, here we go. It floats, and I'm a magician. Okay, cup, what do we think? It certainly is light enough. Here we go. Okay, the cup is a bust. See a cup. Carrot? If the bat floated, I feel like the carrot's gonna float. But what do you guys think? Mmm. From now on, that's how I'm eating my carrots. It's a really gross carrot. I'm not, I don't even want to eat this. This big bowl, we got the smaller blue bowl to float. Let's see if we can get this one to float. quite stable enough. Oh, this baby I'm real excited for. Can we get the baby head to float? The baby floats. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't throw the baby. Okay, that leaves just the boat and the hot dog. I think by this point, maybe you've kind of figured out the pattern. My guess is this is not gonna float. Wow. Wow, wow. Whatever floats your boat, clearly it's not air in this case. And this leaves us just with the hot dog. I wanted to save the hot dog for last because I have an idea here. 
Okay, that floats very well. It's time for a good old fashioned weenie roast. We're gonna try a completely frictionless way to roast this hot dog. We have not practiced this. <laughs> oh, Josh got scared. Well, that is a perfectly lukewarm hot dog. I am not gonna take a bite out of this. Next time you have a camp out, all I'm saying is consider a 300 gallon, 100 PSI air compressor with a flamethrower. Just gonna put that on the table. Okay, so we did the hair dryer, we did the air compressor. I've got one more I'm just curious about. You might recognize this from the snowball machine gun video. Yeah! It's a good old fashioned run of the mill leaf blower. Here we go. 